Horror movies are, of course, famously well known for everyone being really happy, having a great time, and no one ever being sad for any reason whatsoever. You've already read the title of this video, haven't you? Right, let's get to it. I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Horror, and here are 10 horror movie characters who had to make horrendous decisions. Number 10. The Ain't Rights Green Room. It speaks volumes to the suffering endured by punk band The Ain't Rights in Green Room that it's legitimately difficult to pick the most horrendous decision the musicians are forced to make from the catalog of examples on offer. The 2013 horror thriller sees the band witness a murder at the hands of a group of neo-Nazis who confine them to the film's eponymous green room under the pretense of calling the authorities. In actuality, the Patrick Stewart-led group of barbarous thugs are calling for backup to eliminate any witnesses to the crime. Ultimately, the worst decision the band is forced to make is the resolution to leave the relative safety of the room in an attempt to fight their way out. While they were unaware as to the exact nature of the horrors that awaited, this was an exceedingly nightmarish decision to have to make after witnessing Anton Yelchin's arm get graphically slashed to ribbons when the group opened the door to negotiate. Quelle surprise, the horrors do not end with this fraught determination as the musicians' tormentors proceed to set vicious fighting dogs upon them, the very definition of a lose lose decision. Number 9. Dan Walker, Frozen. Do you wanna build a snowman? Out of despair. The production team behind Frozen, no not that Frozen, clearly aspired to this morbid task, bestowing their characters with one of the more unenviable choices in recent memory. The 2010 horror sees a trio of unfortunate skiers stranded on a ski lift at the top of a mountain with apocalyptic weather fast approaching. While the typical response to this turn of events would be to simply sit and wait to be rescued, the group aren't so lucky. The lift operator who sent them on their merry way is soon relieved by another who is unaware that they are even on the mountain. This nightmarish situation is compounded even further by the resort closing for a week in light of the oncoming storms. After enduring their near intolerable levels of a vicious blizzard, the group are faced with a delightful conundrum. Sit there and slowly freeze to death, or risk life and limb by plummeting 50 feet to the icy floor below. Kevin Zager's Dan eventually takes the plunge, hurling himself from the lift in a desperate attempt to escape their predicament. Cue the sad trombone as the hapless Dan fractures both of his legs and is subsequently devoured by a pack of hungry wolves. Ouch. Number 8. Adam Blackwater 2007's Blackwater features a group of Australian tourists on a fishing expedition who become stranded in the mangroves after their vessel is attacked by an enormous saltwater crocodile. The core group, sisters Lee and Grace, in addition to Grace's husband Adam, are tipped out of their boat when their assailant attacks. They manage to escape to the relative safety of a nearby tree as their guide is devoured by the gargantuan reptile, but are separated from their upended boat and only chance of escape by a stretch of murky water. It's a distance of a matter of feet, but considering the danger that lurks in the depths, it might as well be 10 miles. The group are subsequently faced with a truly horrendous choice, wait in the shelter of the mangroves for a rescue party that probably isn't coming and risk starving to death, or brave the black waters containing a bloodthirsty apex predator that survived the KT extinction. It actually somehow gets even worse from there. Adam eventually makes the valiant choice to go for the boat, only to found himself devoured by the colossal predator. The crocodile services before the sobbing survivors gleefully clutching his corpse in their jaws. Number 7. Becky Connor, Fall 2022's Fall is a white-knuckle ride of epic proportions. Scott Mann's picture depicts a climb gone disastrously wrong as two friends find themselves stranded on a tiny platform at the top of a derelict 2,000-foot tall television tower. Grace Curry's Becky and Virginia Gardner's Shiloh realise the true extent of their situation when it's revealed that their phones have no signal. Various attempts to attract attention fail before Shiloh perishes attempting to reach a backpack containing the pair's water supply. Shiloh's death leaves Becky with a macabre choice. The duo have previously attempted to gain a telephone signal by dropping a phone to the ground level in a shoe cushioned with socks and underwear, only for the device to smash into a thousand pieces when it hit the floor. Long story short, more padding is required for the phone to successfully make it to the ground in one piece. Becky makes the harrowing decision to use her friend's corpse as an impact dampener. The traumatised climber shoves a shoe containing her phone into a wound in Shiloh's stomach before pushing her dearly departed companion off the tower to land like a meat pancake cake more than half a kilometre below. Becky's unenviable decision, fortunately, isn't in vain. Shilo's body preserves the device, sending a message to the emergency services and participating her rescue soon after. Number 6. Goreng, The Platform 
Hunger can cause human beings to do unspeakable things, with 2019's The Platform serving as irrefutable proof of this fact. The Spanish sci-fi horror depicts a vertical self-management centre, a colossal building that houses people two to a floor. The resident's only form of sustenance is a slab bearing a feast that descends through the tower's levels once a day, stopping for a fixed amount of time on each floor. While this benefits those on the higher levels, the opposite can be said for their lower counterparts. Forced to scratch a living from leftovers, there isn't even the prospect of squirrelling away any supplies. Any attempts to keep the food past the allotted time see the individuals responsible subjected to fatal temperatures. The film's protagonist, Goreng, is soon plunged into an even more unenviable position. After he and his floor mate, Trimagasi, are assigned to level 171, the latter ties Goreng to a bed, plotting to use his flesh to sustain the pair. Based on Trimagasi's earlier experiences, there will be no food by the time the slab reaches them. Goreng is eventually freed and kills his cannibalistic companion. However, considering that he's on the verge of death from hunger, his only reward is being confronted with a horrendous choice. Eat Tromagasi's flesh or starve. Ivan Masagu's delirious protagonist reluctantly makes the Hadean decision to become a cannibal in order to survive. Number 5. David Jordan, Life Featuring an ensemble cast, 2017's Life received positive reviews and a respectable commercial return. The movie chronicles the discovery of extraterrestrial life on Mars, a murderous life form dubbed Calvin that proceeds to terrorise the six-member crew of the International Space Station. After Calvin viciously wipes out the entirety of the team, bar Jake Gyllenhaal's David Jordan and Rebecca Ferguson's Miranda North, the two survivors realise that Calvin cannot be allowed to wreak havoc on their home planet. Jordan then makes the soul-cleaving decision to sacrifice his own life to protect humanity. After luring the alien into an escape pod, he intends to pilot the vessel into deep space, simultaneously allowing North to return to Earth safely. This was already a desolating choice for Hall's scientist, compounding the emotional damage when it is revealed that North's pod is actually the one hurtling uncontrollably into the black oblivion of space after colliding with debris. Jordan's pod has splashed down on Earth, with Calvin still in tow, presumably precipitating the end of the world when his rescuers open the stricken vehicle and unleash this monster on human civilization. Number four, Noah Fresh. How far would you go in order to survive? It's a question many have likely asked themselves, and one that Daisy Edgar Jones Noah is provided with a horrific answer to in 2022's Fresh. After meeting Sebastian Stan's devonier stranger Steve in a grocery store, Noah agrees to go on a date with him. Things soon progress to a romantic weekend away before taking a nightmarish turn for the worse. Noah is drugged by her new beau, awakening to find herself chained to his basement floor where he reveals the true extent of her plight. Steve is a cannibal, one who attends to sell Noah's flesh for profit while keeping her alive for as long as possible to maintain the freshness of her meat. After a failed escape ploy costs Noah her buttocks, Fresh's protagonist is forced into making a nightmarish decision. Realising that her only hope is to lure her captor into a false sense of security, Noah gains Steve's trust by feigning an interest in what human flesh tastes like. While her ploy is ultimately successful, it comes at the minor cost of having to consume meals containing legitimate human meat. Considering the abhorrent decision Steve forced Noah to make, it's hardly surprising that she ultimately takes revenge by relieving him of his manhood with her teeth. Number three, Andrew and Eric knock at the cabin. 2023's Knock at the Cabin represented a welcome return to form for M. Night Shyamalan, following recent disappointing offerings in the vein of Glass and Old. Based on a novel by Paul Tremblay, the movie centres on a same-sex couple and their daughter on holiday who find themselves held hostage by four mysterious strangers. Led by Dave Bautista's Leonard Brock, the interlopers inform the family that they must sacrifice one of their own or the world will be destroyed by an apocalypse. To put it mildly, this all sounds batch Looney Tunes ridiculous, the unhinged ramblings of a group of deranged intruders. However, as the family failed to make a decision, news updates reveal that the disastrous events predicted by the intruders are actually taking place, with the world devastated by mega tsunamis and plane crashes. The unabated scale of proceedings precipitates a decision that would make Bruce Willis in Armageddon wince. Not wanting his daughter to grow up in the ruins of Earth, Jonathan Groff's Eric offers himself up as a sacrifice to ensure his family's safety. His husband Andrew reluctantly acquiesces, with Eric's death precipitating the end of the near extinction level events. This entry technically constitutes a double whammy. Choosing to sacrifice one's own life is horrendous enough, but having to be the one to shoot your significant other surely takes the cake. Number two, Dr. Lawrence Gordon, 
Saw. Contentiously, what is horror's most famous horrendous decision can be found in the most deviously nasty entry to come out of 2004, Saw. Long before the franchise's first offering spawned 10 wildly successful follow-ups, the original Saw depicted one of the most horrific decisions ever seen on screen. James Wan's picture follows the plight of Adam and Dr. Lawrence Gordon, the latest victims of the Jigsaw Killer. The pair awaken to find themselves chained to pipes in a dilapidated room next to an apparent suicide victim holding a retriever. The discovery of a bag of hacksaws only makes matters more terrifying. The saws are incapable of cutting through the chains, leading to the appalling realisation that the tools are for removing the pair's feet. Lawrence's day then goes from bad to worse, as a tape recording reveals that his wife and daughter are also being held hostage by their tormentor. Gordon must kill Adam, or his family dies. After a movie's worth of psychological torture, Gordon snaps when he hears gunshots over a one-way cell phone connected to his family's captor. In a state of manic desperation, the doctor makes the nauseating decision to saw off his own foot, allowing him to grab the revolver and shoot Adam. The supreme irony of this appalling decision is that Lawrence doesn't even attempt to use the blade to simply drag the cell phone into reach. Saw baby, saw. Number one, Stephen Murphy, the killing of a sacred deer. It's hard to envision a more torturous decision than choosing which member of your own family should die. Unfortunately for Colin Farrell's Stephen Murphy in the critically acclaimed psychological horror The Killing of a Sacred Deer, that's exactly the predicament that the cardiothoracic surgeon finds himself in. Yorgos Lanthimos' 2017 offering follows Murphy's plight after he causes the death of a patient by operating on him while under the influence. Murphy's family duly becomes plagued by a series of inexplicable medical conditions, including paralysis and an inability to eat. The patient's son, Martin, played in a mesmerising turn by Irish actor Barry Keoghan, reveals that the surgeon must kill a member of his own family in recompense for the death of his father, or the illness will claim them all. After his son Bob begins to bleed from the eyes, a symptom that Martin warned would precede death by a few hours, Farrell's tortured character is incapable of choosing who to kill. He takes the decision out of his own hands, tying his family up in a circle and covering their heads with hoods. Murphy then obscures his own vision with a woolen hat, spinning himself in a wild circle before firing a rifle in random directions. Stephen's third shot hits Bob, killing him instantly and providing the end result for one of the more harrowing decisions in cinematic history. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Thank you very much for watching along. Thank you to Gabriel Sheehan, who wrote the list that this is based on. You can check that out over on whatculture.com. Thank you very much to the wonderful Laura for editing this and turning it into cinematic gold. Remember, you can follow us over on Twitter at whatculturehorror, and we are over on YouTube as well, upon which you are probably watching this. So please make sure that you're liking, sharing, and subscribing. 